Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here! Today we'll be benchmarking the newly released Dawn of War 2 Retribution, Feral's latest Linux port. Thanks to Andrew Wood of Feral for providing me with a review copy. However, I already owned the Grandmaster Collection, so I'll be using that instead. Why this port is so exciting to me is that it looks to be a gesture of goodwill from Sega to us Linux gamers for the upcoming Dawn of War 3. I guess it also serves as practice for Feral's porting team. As always, timeline links in the description down below so you can skip to the parts that matter to you. Let's get started! Right at the beginning of the game we can already see a difference and that is that the AMD and ATI logo are no longer a part of the intro video and is subsequently replaced with the Feral Interactive logo. Now when it comes to the graphical settings, we get an identical set of options to the Windows version which is a very very good thing. Up next, we look at the CPU and RAM usage and Ubuntu sits around 24 to 25% whilst Windows sits around 20%. On Ubuntu, RAM goes up to about 1.8 gigs of usage and under Windows, it sits under, surprisingly, 500 MB. When taking a look at the image quality between the two, I was unable to discern any difference between the anti-aliasing, the shadows, the lighting, or the texture quality. So now we come to the comparison part where I put them side by side. On the left side is Ubuntu 16.04 and on the right side is Windows 10. We're running this at ultra settings, everything on and maxed out at 1080p. And we see that Feral's port actually does pretty good at keeping up with the Windows side. We do however lose some frames but the drops are consistent with what you get on Windows. That is, when Windows drops, we drop on Linux as well. But the drops can be ever so slightly more negative, anywhere ranging from only a few frames per second less to sometimes as high as 10 frames per second less. That said, this is at Ultra, and considering that we have the indirect X layer overhead, this is actually pretty well done. The, the outcome is not as bad as I thought it might be. Company of Heroes 2 had a slightly harder time keeping up. This is definitely an improvement. So as we saw just now, we're definitely losing slightly few more frames on Ubuntu than Windows on average. But as we see here from the outcome at the final part of the benchmark is that we actually retain a higher minimum. And you can also see this on Gaming on Linux website as well with their benchmarks, which is actually a pretty good thing. This means when it drops, it doesn't drop as badly as it does on Windows. Now an interesting thing is when we drop it down to 720p resolution, the Linux version actually overcomes the Windows version and by quite a significant amount. So I've seen this in past benchmarks as well, it's a very interesting thing to see. I was also curious to see whether or not the GL threaded optimizations trick would do anything for this so I went ahead and tried it, I added it here as you can see in the launch options for Steam. But when I ran it, sadly, it's actually a negative uh, outcome. You don't want to do this, you'll lose frames overall when you try this. So definitely do not use the GL threaded optimizations technique. Alright, so we've come to the end of our benchmark. And I'll quickly summarize the pros and cons to this latest Linux port. First, the problems or cons. We have that ever so slightly less performance than Windows, which is a gap we're closing with each new port, which is really awesome. I have to commend Farrell here for a good job on improving. Please do not stop improving. The biggest issue though is the partial cross-platform multiplayer. This means we can play with other Macers and Linuxers, but we can't see the Windowsers and they can't see us. That's really bad. As I'll show you here after three days of trying, I met only one dude on the general chat and he was unable to get a match in last stand as was I. Now if Feral ports Dawn of War 3, this is a scenario that would be greatly unacceptable and I really hope they understand the gravity of this. With that said, the pros or good stuff about this port are several. First up, we get a launcher that Windows users do not get, which enables us to easily window the game. Now if you've tried to do this in Windows, as have I, You'll know just how bad an experience it is to get the game windowed and how buggy it is in Windows. The second thing is that this is the most stable port I have played from Feral thus far. Zero crashes and no glitches or bugs no matter what I try to do to break the game. And lastly, the Steam Cloud saves are cross-platform. This is a, a breath of relief here. 
I don't have to restart my campaigns as it automatically updates this and this goes all ways. So regardless of what platform you or I play on, we can continue our campaigns and keep our last stand levels which is pretty darn awesome. So that's it for this video guys. If I've made mistakes or I've forgotten something, please go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. If you've got suggestions for improvements that hopefully I can do, I will take them into consideration. Thank you for watching.